In this lecture, I'm going to get you prepared for the motions lecture tutorial. And we're going to talk about how things in the night sky appear to change over the course of, say, a day or night. We'll be talking about star trails and the directions that those star trails appear. First of all, let's talk about the celestial sphere and how you can compare that to a horizon diagram view. The simulation that I have here shows a celestial sphere, which I can rotate around. I've got a location marked in the northern, northern hemisphere in North America. And then at that location, on the right view, we've got a person standing in a horizon diagram view. So I'm going to rotate this so that it's roughly the kind of uh, diagram that we have in our lecture tutorials. And I'm going to add some stars. Let me add the Big Dipper initially. So the Big Dipper is comprised of stars that are pretty close to the North Celestial Pole on the uh, celestial sphere. Which means, really, only if you're in the Northern Hemisphere are you going to see these stars. Now, what does that mean for a person who's standing in, say, the continental US? What will they see in the sky? Well. If I hit play, then what we'll see is the celestial sphere appear to rotate around the Earth. And in the horizon diagram view, we'll see the path uh, marked out as the celestial sphere rotates. So let me go ahead and hit play. And we see that the stars of the uh, Big Dipper are marking out some trails on the horizon diagram view. For this person, standing in the continental US, these stars are always above the horizon. That is, they are circumpolar. And so notice how when the Big Dipper gets close to the northern horizon, the stars really don't go below it. They just keep going around in the sky and never rise or set. If I rotate my horizon diagram view so that north is into the screen, then what we see is the path which is a circle around the North Celestial Pole. And they just keep going around. If you're facing north, they appear to go counterclockwise. OK, so let me go back to a regular view. I'm going to add another star pattern to the mix. The other star pattern I'm going to add is the stars of Orion. And so the stars of Orion are pretty close to the uh, celestial equator. Which means for a person standing in uh, uh, the, the northern hemisphere, the stars of Orion will rise very close to the uh, eastern direction, set very close to the western direction. And here's what it looks like to them. I will uh, start the animation. So the stars of Orion, you can see uh, them setting in the west. Now they're below the horizon. It'll take some time for them to come back up. But when they rise, they're going to appear to rise up and to the right if you're facing east, which brings them to their highest point above the southern horizon, which just happened there. So now they're going down towards the west and setting below. Let's watch this again. When the stars of Orion rise, they will rise somewhere in the east, go up and to the right towards the south, get to their highest point above the southern horizon, and then come set somewhere in the west. What does it look like if I face south? Well, let's go ahead and do that. I'll remove the stars of the Big Dipper from this view. If I'm facing south, then that means the stars of Orion will rise somewhere in the east, get high up in the south, but not directly overhead, and then set towards the west. All right, so let's try and add some other stars that are very close to the South Celestial Pole. And to do that, what I'll do is I'll remove the stars of Orion, and I'll add the stars of the Southern Cross. So in my Celestial Sphere view, the stars of the Southern Cross are very close to the South Celestial Pole. And I'll rotate my view so that uh, my horizon diagram is very much like the uh, one in the book. 
When the celestial sphere appears to rotate around the Earth, stars that are very close to the south celestial pole will probably not be visible to a person in the continental United States. So watch what happens uh, in my horizon diagram view. You'll see that the stars of the Southern Cross are uh, below the horizon right now, and I'm going to turn long star trails on so that you can see the path as these uh, stars appear to move around. So as the celestial sphere rotates, the paths of uh, the stars of the Southern Cross are going to stay completely below the horizon. For this person in the continental United States, they'll never see these stars. You'd have to move to a more southern latitude in order to see these. So these stars never rise or set because they're always below the horizon. Okay, so that's a little bit about motion. Let's talk about what it would look like in a star trail view. If you're facing north in the northern hemisphere, then stars are going to appear to rotate counterclockwise around the North Star, Polaris. If you were to take a camera and open the shutter for several hours, you could take a photograph that includes star trails. That is, the stars, because they're moving, they will, or appear to be moving, they will leave streaks on your photograph. And so the photograph that I've got here on this slide shows stars uh, in the northern sky as seen in Arizona. And you can see that they are, uh, the streaks are arcs that would make circles that uh, appear to go counterclockwise around the North Star. In the southern hemisphere, you wouldn't be able to face uh, the North Celestial Pole. You would face south to see the South Celestial Pole. And if you're facing south in the southern hemisphere, the stars would just go the opposite direction. They would go clockwise around the south celestial pole, and that's because the stars are still rising somewhere in the east or coming up from the east, and then they have to go over to the west. A photograph taken in the southern hemisphere facing south would look like this. This is in uh, Chile, and uh, we see that the stars also make arcs uh, that are centered on the south celestial pole. Here is another star trail photograph, and this one is taken in the, in the northern hemisphere, and we're seeing star trails, but they don't appear to be circling around anything. And so the question we can ask our, ourselves is, what direction are, are we facing? And here we see that the uh, star trails are angled up and to the right. And that tells me that I'm facing east, because if I'm in the northern hemisphere and I faced east, then stars are going to go up to the right towards the southern part of the sky. If the star trails were angled to the left, then I know then I would know that I'm facing west. What about the sun? How does the motion of the sun uh, appear over the course of a day? Well, it's very much like the other stars. Because Earth doesn't move very far in its orbit in the course of one day, that means that the position of the sun on the celestial sphere is not going to change very much just in one day. So we can treat it as a fixed star, like all the other stars, in just a few hours or just uh, 24 hours. So in, for daily motion, we can say that as the stars move, so does the sun. So the sun is going to rise somewhere in the east and set somewhere in the west, which means when it rises, it will go up and to the right, get high in the southern sky, and then set somewhere in the west. What does that look like? Let's go over to a Stellarium view. And I have this set for uh, the end of January, early in the morning, just after the sun has risen. And so the sun is here just above the southeastern horizon. It's in front of the stars of Capricornus. <clears throat> Some people think that the Sun will just drift through the constellations over the course of the day as it rises and then sets, but that's not true. The Sun and the stars move because it's the Earth that is turning on its axis, and so when the Sun rises, the stars will also rise, and they all move at the same speed together. So let me increase the speed of this animation 
so that we can see the sun and the stars move together. So if we could see the stars during the day, this is what we would see. The stars of Capricornus and the sun move together, get high up in the southern sky. So I just hit pause here at local noon. This is uh, the date on this one is January 28. The sun and Capricornus are high in the sky together, and then they will set together. The sun and the stars move together over the course of one single day. But what about over the course of, say, a month? That's really the topic for our next lecture, but let me show you how that works. <clears throat> you can see that the sun is in front of the stars of Capricornus right now. And Capricornus, you may know, is one of the star is one of the constellations that make up the zodiac of constellations. There there are 13 zodiacal constellations, and those are the stars that the sun would appear to move in front of over the course of an entire year, not one day, just an entire year. So, and that and that is because the earth is moving in its orbit around the sun. So in one month, we may actually see the sun change its position in the sky. So right now it's January 28, local noon, the sun is in front of Capricornus. What if I change this to February 28? So if I go to my date and time, and I change this to the same time of the day, just to one month later. In that case, what we have is the sun also high up above the southern sky, but instead of being in front of Capricornus, the sun is in front of Aquarius. This took an entire month for the sun to drift from one constellation over to the next one, Aquarius. How this works is the subject of our next tutorial. So the lesson for today here is about motions of the stars in the sky, depending on what direction you're facing, and that if you're looking at the sun for daily motion, it moves with the stars, and they all move at the same speed together. So, go ahead and try out the motion lecture tutorial, and I think you've got enough information to do that now.